नमस्ते एवरीवन प्रणाम नमो हिमालय If we just begin by balancing out our energies, if we all just sit up nice and straight, please sit up nice and straight. Your eyes are closed. You take a slow inhale. A gentle exhale. Listen to the sound of the breath as you breathe. And again, full inhale all the way down to the energy center. Expand the stomach area. And gentle exhale, cleanse, clear, relax, remove any unwanted thoughts or energies. and again slow inhale and gentle exhale relax your mind come back to your normal breathing relax your breath relax your energies bringing your presence of mind here now your consciousness your alertness your awareness is here right now in this very moment allow yourself to settle in the peace feel the balance in the breath the balance in your energies and when your presence of mind is here i'd like you to bring your palms together hold prayer at heart hold namaste and i'd like you just to allow yourself to connect with the moon energies and allow yourself to visualize the light becoming brighter and brighter allow yourself to connect with the light energies and allow yourself to become one with the light energies of the moon very bright white light allow yourself to connect and allow this light to become brighter and brighter and expand from within you and expand way beyond you feel the energy shift feel the love feel the joy feel the positivity feel the energies take a slow inhale and gentle exhale and just allow yourself to slowly come back here now presence of mind and when you're ready just gently open your eyes
Allow yourself to connect with the peace. Allow yourself to become peaceful. Throughout today and the coming two days, allow yourself to connect with that peaceful vibration. Whenever you close your eyes, you witness it's peaceful. Over the next few days, also allow yourself to practice left nostril breathing. That left side is open, connect to moon energies. This will help you protect your energies and navigate through the coming days. Somebody, uh, actually a few people, uh, sent me uh, some photos, uh, sent me some messages uh, of the moon, of the eclipse, the lunar eclipse. saying how beautiful it looks. In our practices, we don't celebrate moon eclipse, lunar eclipse. In uh, this existence, we have two parts to energy, positive energy and negative energy. When uh, you have eclipse, the light energy is being covered up. When light is covered up, then in these moments, darkness is prevailing. So when darkness is there, then negative energies are out to do the work that they need to do. This isn't to scare anybody. Nobody needs to be afraid or anything because also negative energies is not bad. It just is. It's existing energy. There has to be some sort of destruction in the world to be able to have new creation. You cannot get new order without chaos. And so when this happens, it covers up. Now negative energies can go and do the work they need to do to cleanse the old for the new to begin. Now, what does this mean for everybody? It means that it's very easy for certain triggers to happen. Emotionally, triggers to happen. It's very easy for arguments to start. It's very easy for emotions just to come from nowhere and you start uh, uh, getting upset or emotional or angry at somebody or you getting those feelings. Maybe in the past couple of days, some of you may have experienced something like that already. Or if that frustration comes because that's the way the energies are right now. And why is it that those things are triggered? Because if you look at our, in, in on full moon, ocean waves are very different. Energy waves, water waves is very different. You're, you are mostly water. The way your emotions are is very different. And so, Whenever you find yourself being triggered by someone, something, some situation, some message, some speech, something happening, just acknowledge, ah, okay, my emotions are more vibrant right now. And just allow yourself to breathe and exhale. Bring yourself back to peace. 
bring yourself back to connecting with moon energies. Bring yourself back to connecting with the light, as we did at the beginning of this practice today. Did anybody here realize when you came onto this call, it was one energy that was consistent and you didn't realize it was at one energy. Then after some breath work, some consciousness, some light, very short meditation, you realized that the stillness was there and the peacefulness was there. Did anybody realize that? Yep. You all have this tool. You can access it whenever you want to. So your goal from today, the next coming two days, is to, as often as you can, connect with the moon energies. Moon energies is peaceful. Is light energies. Is stillness. Is calm. Is ordered. Is like that. So allow yourself to often connect with these energies over the coming days. This full moon, you will not particularly uh, think too much about what you want to manifest. You don't need to say, I need to use this full moon to do manifestation meditation. During this full moon, what you are meditating on, you only have one goal, and that is for praying for more light. So your prayer should be for more light. You are praying for the moon light to prevail. You are praying for the light energies to prevail, to expand, to become bigger with more love, with more positivity. That's what you're praying for in your daily practices, in your meditation. You're praying for moon, you're praying for light. When you are praying for something that is beyond you, something that is external, you have to become it to pray for that. Do you realize that you cannot, you cannot pray for moon to have more light and more positivity and love while you're feeling hate and anger and frustration at the same time? Naturally, what you are praying for, for something that is way, way, way bigger than you, you will naturally become. And because you're naturally becoming, that's why your personal manifestations will be taken care of. These few days, there is no, no thought in, I want to manifest this, I need to manifest this. These few days, there's no thought in that. These few days, you are connecting with energies that is beyond you. You're praying for light, you're praying for moon, you're praying for moon to prevail. And in turn, naturally, you allow yourself to be open in the receiving, And everything will naturally come without you trying. Another good practice um, that you can do is moon salutations. So over the next coming days as well, you do moon salutation. You either do 11 counts, 21 counts, 11 counts, 21 counts, 21 cycles is very good. When you do moon salutations, if you are doing during evening, you're facing moon, you're feeling the energies. Again, you're connecting with your, the moon energies and you are one with moon. So allow yourself to become that. And again, pray for the lights to prevail. That's what you are praying for. So, it shouldn't be the case that you are outside uh, uh, celebrating a lunar, a lunar eclipse. Mm. On uh, 
some of the videos I've I've put out to on 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 social media from the uh, simple level we will say generally do not go out in busy areas and uh, 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 be around too many people because it's easier for you to become triggered it's easier for emotional triggers to happen and therefore the trigger emotional trigger because emotions is energy and motion leads to the emotional action the emotional action leads to the emotion emotion result which is the reactive result and because of the timing that re, the the result of the action from an emotional motion will be of a negative will be of a chaos <clears throat> and so that's why we say actually generally speaking probably better not to venture out over the coming days however for a group of everybody here i know this many of you also have done many practices um, with us through 108 or 1008 how many of you here part of 108 or 1008 so there's many of you so when you are building up strong spirits you go through a spiritual journey you build up strong spirit so when it's like that actually it should be the case that even if you need to venture out today you have meetings you have things to do you have people to meet if your spirit is strong enough actually nothing should be disturbed so uh, if you feel strong enough then nothing should be disturbed it should be a case where you go anywhere anybody say something you can witness it anybody does something you witness it you receive a text message you witness it but you witness with no emotion and if you can get through witnessing everything that it doesn't matter what people say what people do what you see what you hear it doesn't matter what what happens you and you can witness it without any emotion then actually you will not be affected but this is the strength of your spirit that's why a lot of the time through practicing to become stronger and stronger your spirits your spiritual powers to be stronger we practice witnessing meditation because when you practice witnessing meditation you are sat there you're witnessing you're witnessing head is itchy you're witnessing leg is itchy you're witnessing it's cold you're witnessing it's hot you're witnessing all of these things you're witnessing sound somebody opened the door in meditation but nothing triggered any emotion thought or dialogue so you practice to be the witnesser who does not get involved in all the emotions and the dialogue of everything that's going on These are the only dates of this month that hold any temperamental energies. After this window closes, the rest of the month is a home run, very calm. Very calm. And then moving into June is uh, starting, energies will start to pick up for fast manifestations. So, everybody in this space should be using this this ongoing time this oncoming time the next couple of weeks in planning in planning what things in your life no longer serve you how can you let those go in planning how can you clear your space how can you clean your space this is a good time to start clearing clearing out a lot of uh, trash a lot of things that is around you a lot of clutter this is a very good time for that for some of you declutter that wardrobe uh, holding some of the clothes that you used to once upon a time fit into 
and often look at the clothing thinking one day I'll be that slim again. <laughs> but also been looking at that clothing for the last 20 years and nothing much has happened. <laughs> Maybe it's time that uh, somebody else can make use of things like that. So it's a good time to declutter. Things that you no longer use, things that you no longer wear, things that is from the past. Clear the space, clear the space for new energies to come in. Some of you may go as far as moving home. You see now this home here is empty. There's just nothing here. Mm. So it's a fresh beginning. Find new space. And then a lot of the old things, whatever you can donate to charity, donate to charity. This should be done in this, uh, these coming weeks. Complete cleanse. Another thing that some of you can move into, we will be doing this uh, towards the end of the month as well. You can do fasting. It's very good at end of this month, towards the end of this month. You do three-day water fast, five-day water fast. Some of you, more intense, can do 10-day water fast. Why? Because fasting... Remember, all, everything, emotions, trauma, everything is stored in energy center. When you fast, because the metaphysical energy is represented as physical energy. That's why some of you have this cute donut thing happening on the bottom side of the energy center. And so... When we fast, what is it doing? It's eating into the physical. And when it's eating into the physical, it's removing the energy in the physical. Therefore, we'll release the energy in the metaphysical. Past traumas, limiting beliefs, doubts, fears, experiences, things like that, that is negative. It will eat into all of that and it will cleanse, it will clear. Mm. Can you tell us more about water fast? So for physical, for health reasons, people who do water fast, people who do water fast for one day, you're not really doing anything actually. Uh, you might as well not do it. It's not gonna do anything. Uh, two day, probably still very similar. Third day is actually when it begins. Third day, second to third day is when it begins. So you imagine uh, inside your pipes will have so much stored there. Um, things that you will not even want to think about is stored there that has been there for many years. Um, it's stored there. And because every day you're just consuming food and it's digesting that food and then this thing is stuck in the pipeline like that. So when you are cleansing, it will flush out a lot of water, flush out a lot of water, body will be completely empty. Once body is completely empty, around day two to day three is when, because your body requires energy, it needs to eat into something to find energy. So it'll start eating into the sides of those pipes, you see? And so it'll start eating into the fat and everything that is stored there all the toxins, everything. And so day two, day three, it will be very different. Your experience will be very different. Mm. That's why sometimes as well, when you go into day two, day three, some of you will get, start to get bitter tongue on, a bitter taste on tongue. When it goes into day two and day three. Some of you will experience bad breath. Why is that? Because it's eating into all of the stuck energies, the toxins, everything, and it is coming out, you see? 
So no food, just water. I know some of you who are, who are rebels at school, who like to go wild when you party, will ask the question, Master, is it okay to add lemon in the water? Is it okay to add mint leaves in the water? Is it okay to put a drop of honey in the water? Uh, so some of you are wild like that. Water cleanse is water cleanse, not water honey cleanse, not water mint leaf cleanse, not water lemon cleanse. Water fast is water. So you just take water. So from a health perspective, that water fasting will be very good. From a mental mindset training, it is very strong. Those of you who do not have much discipline, those of you who do not have much willpower, you will see in day one, day two, you will see. Day one, most likely you will experience hunger and you will feel like you need to eat and your stomach is empty and it's making sounds. Day two, you will, morning, you'll feel the same thing. Day two, evening, most likely you will not be hungry, but you just feel like you need some taste in mouth and you need to eat something. Day three, most likely you are not hungry at all. You're just not hungry. You feel there's some emptiness, but it's not hunger. But again, you might just want to eat something. Day three, I always say is home run because actually three day water fast and five day water fast, there's not much difference. And five day water fast and 10 day or 15 water fast is not much difference. It's just willpower at that moment. If you are surrounded by people, a lot of people eating, then it's going to be harder for you for sure because it's really testing your willpower. So fasting is very good. Mentally, it will train your mind, your mindset. Most likely, some of you who are slightly on that weaker side, on day one, you'll say, I feel very dizzy. I'm going to faint. On day two, you'll say, I'm fainting. I'm fainting. You never get round to fainting. You just say it. That's all. They choose, say, no, I can't, I'm very lightheaded, I'm very lightheaded. They choose, some of you may feel like you might die soon. Uh, then you know this is the strength of your spirit. <laughs> Nobody dies from a two-day water fast. <laughs> but you have died many times in your mind, that's all. So you will know the strength of your mind, the strength of your spirit through fasting. Can we do inter intermittent fasting instead of water fast? You can do any fast. You can do burger fast if you want, just eat burgers. You can do French fries fast if you want, just eat French fries. You can, you can do any fast you want. That's, that's, not, that's, not down, that's got nothing to do with me. You see? That's what I'm saying, you guys are rebels. Uh, say, I say water fast, you say in intermittent fasting. That's okay. You do whatever fasting you want, whatever suits you. Uh, you see, it doesn't, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect me. I'm just giving, I'm giving some practice for you to do, that's all. So from mental level, it's very strong. From health level, it's very strong. It's removing all toxins and, and stuck uh, food and things that are inside the pipes. From spiritual level, it's very strong because it will start eating into the physical and the physical will then be the reflection into the metaphysical. So spiritually, 
your light energy. You will find after three day water fast, when you do meditation and you visualize light towards third eye, it will become 10 times brighter. 10 times brighter. You, you, you witness it. After three days, you witness. When you, when you close your eyes and you say, witness the light, it's just 10 times brighter. So your, your meditations will be far deeper when you go into other dimensions and things like that. It'll be way, way, way deeper. What is maximum days for water fast, Master? Uh, I wouldn't, this is based on body. So obviously, if anybody has any health conditions, you, everybody needs to uh, be aware of that and maybe consult doctor. Uh, so um, uh, you, need to, you need to know how to listen to your body. This is not a forceful pushing. I just know that you all can do one day, three day water fast, and uh, there shouldn't be many people dying. Uh, so this should be okay. If you want to do five day, 10 day, 15 day, that is your personal choice. You need to feel how you're feeling. If you're feeling okay, still plenty of energy, then you can go. Hmm. 30 day, I would not really recommend for everybody like that because it depends on your body. Okay. So usually three day will extend to five day, five day could extend to 10 day. Hmm. 10 day, 15 day is already pushing the boundary for a lot of people, I believe. So if everybody makes sure to be inside the discord, when uh, we do the water fast on this side at the end of the month, we will also put it to everybody too. So we will let everybody know. For those of you who are part of 108 and 1008, when the water fasting is happening, we will most likely be hosting one call each day for some personal practices during those days. Okay, so you will receive all emails and notifications. So just make sure everybody is part of the Discord. Everybody is part of the Discord. The announcement will happen inside the Discord. How does Discord work, Master? Discord is like a chat room. That's all. There's multiple rooms to chat in. So when you click the link, if uh, we can put the link in for them. If you click the link, it will open up Discord. You can download the Discord app. And inside, you will find everybody who's here inside there, just chatting, brainstorming, uh, masterminding, uh, sometimes talking nonsense also. Uh, you'll see many of the people here inside they're getting to know each other so that is the link yeah it's free for everybody to join and on the left panel you will see announcements then you can find announcements you will find general chat different chat rooms you can chat in those just get to know everybody a little bit better it's free for everybody to join So what we can do, we can open up the floor just for a few questions. Any 108 members, 1008 members, if you have any questions, you can hit the virtual hand raise button. Uh, just make sure 108 or 1008 is on your name tag if you are part of 108 and 1008. And then we will conclude with a beautiful meditation connecting with moon energies. Yep, we begin with Jana, yes. Hello, Master. Namo Himalaya. Happy Namo Himalaya. I'm so happy to see you after this two weeks. <laughs> we, we miss you a lot after those wonderful journey we had together. Um, Master, I have a lot of questions, but the main one is that um, um, when we started the uh, 108 journey um, and we started the diet, and then I started feeling bitter on my tongue, and then the bitter taste turned to sour taste and then a salty taste and i still have my diet and i still feel those tastes is it okay yeah um so taste on tongue can be multiples of reasons could be to do with the diet 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not, I'm not saying the no onion, no garlic, no mushroom. I'm not saying that diet. I'm saying what you are actually consuming each day. Yeah. It could be to do with that. It could be to do with the toxins in your body. It could be to do with any struggles that you may be encountering in life. So multiples of things it could be. So the first thing you would check for yourself, first of all, understand what does things like uh, intake of garlic and onion and things like that, very powerful um, uh, substances, what does it do? When you eat something that's uh, full of garlic, after you eat other things, you, only, you still only taste the garlic. Garlic is strongest. So it overpowers all taste. That's why, in theory, what you may have been tasting anyway on tongue was bitter taste, except it's always covered up with all the other tastes that we consume. So why now we taste more is because of the diet, we taste more, we sense more. So we become more aware, more intuitive about what, it, what we are consuming, what's happening in our body, right? When you've cut those things out of the diet, now you can sense everything. So the first question to ask yourself is, what is the, my daily diet? Because cutting those things out doesn't mean it's a healthy diet. People can still eat, <laughs> even vegan, people can be vegan and still not be a healthy vegan, you see? So it's also time to consider what are we consuming? If we're consuming a lot of um, processed foods, if we're, cons cons uh, if we're consuming a lot of uh, fried foods or deep frying and things like that, foods like that, then there's toxins as well. And then it will become taste on tongue. We will taste everything. Mm -hmm. So what, what could be um, practiced to, to test this theory, if it's to do with diet, is all you need to do is do a raw food diet for just three days. You'll experience straight away. If you do raw food diet for three days, meaning just leaves without cooking, no cooking at all, right? If you do that for three days and you experience, you see if there's any taste left and there's no taste left, you will realize that, ah, it was diet that was creating it. So it's raw food, it's fruits and vegetables, only raw, yeah? Fruits, fruits yeah. vegetable, only raw, no cooking is required, yeah. So like salads and things is okay, yeah. So if you do that for a few days and you notice, ah, there's no taste now because it's all alkali, Mm -hmm. There's no toxins. You realize it's not the toxins that's created. Um, uh, you, you see, because it could be the acidity that's creating that taste. Okay. If it's not that, and if after a raw food practice, you are still feel, you are still tasting that, then now we need to consider whether physically are we feeling challenged or stressed, because that will happen. When you're physically challenged or stressed, you will feel bitter tongue on taste we will experience that. How do we know that happens? When we experience a real hardcore Y4M practice when we do our yoga session, sometimes we get a bitter taste on tongue, it goes dry and we feel a bitter taste because our, we're physically challenged. But you will know if you're physically challenged or not. And if the answer is no, then it's got nothing to do with that. Now, the final, final thing is if we are energetically challenged. Now, most likely, it's not that. For most people, it's not that. For most people, it's the first or the second thing. There's either some stress or overthinking going on, it's physically challenged, or it's uh, the diet is uh, too much acid and too much toxins. Uh, spiritually, um, if those two things are clear, the last thing, spiritually challenged, is not so common. Uh, especially in this space when you are doing practices to protect your energies and things, it, it, it is not so common. Thank you. I have another question I, I can ask. Um, it just happened, I think, um, from day 15 or 16 of our journey when I was doing my personal uh, meditation practices. Um, so I felt like um, when, when I was sitting after a few moments, I felt like a very heavy weight was coming on my hands and something was pushing me down very hard. And uh, it's still going with this. Um, I, I still feel like this when I'm doing meditation most of the time, that something is pushing me down to, to the depths of the uh, earth. When you are doing which practice and which meditation? 
In different meditations, we we did the meditation on we we were visualizing the um the lotus, the three layers that we were going. That was the one I felt more. Even the one that was um the 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 tunnel that was going down, I still felt that. And even sometimes in the morning when I try to do the silent meditation, I'm not I'm not visualizing anything. I still feel this heaviness in my hands. The heaviness in your hands. You are holding Prapti Mudra and it's heavy. I do it like this. Yeah. And you're feeling it's heavy. Yeah. Just the palms or you're feeling an energy center also? Uh, both. But on the palms. So towards the bottom part of your body, you're feeling something is weighing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. In that case, then you need to work more on, on this part here. Expanding. So... You need to work more on breath work that is opening up this channel. And, and when you open up this channel, that's only activating. Once you've activated for five, 10 minutes, you want to draw that breath up towards head. And you want to allow it out, allow it to empty from top. So open up, then bring energy up and allow it to release. You'll feel pressure build on head and allow it to move up, channel the energy upwards. Yeah. Not downwards. When this, upwards. Not downwards. Because this part is too heavy, uh, we want to move the energy. So now we move the energy upwards. Okay. Yeah. So if you do more of those practices, over maybe one, two weeks, when you do this practice, no longer this will be heavy. Hmm. Because your palms, why your palms is heavy, why, do, why is it that when we hold, we are holding here, this is energy center. The weight you're feeling is not palms. The weight you're feeling is energy center. This is the weight. That's why the full body here is, is when, st more too, when stuck energies are here, this is what will happen. Uh, too heavy here. So now we need to move it up. That's why also this fasting will be good for you also. Sure, I will, I will check the emails and start it with you. And Master, the only thing I want to know, can I continue with the salt on my bed or shall I leave it to the air? You can conclude with that now. So everybody on one away journey, you can take the salt from your bed um, and you can take it out to nature. You can take it out to beach. You can take it out to forest. You can take it out next to tree and garden. Uh, you will just offer it back into nature. When you offer it back into nature, you will say a prayer just to say thank you for the protection. Thank you for the energies. Thank you for the cleansing. And you'll just offer it back into nature. So that is the protocol to conclude. Thank you very much, Master. Hope to see you very, very soon. Namo Himalaya. Um, Carol, yes. Hi, Master. How are you? Namo Himalaya. Namo Himalaya. Uh, so, it is actually an honor to speak to you finally. I've been kind of holding this question for a while. I haven't, um, I've been having a lot of uh, problems. Um, I feel that I am um, holding myself back and I know it's, it's me the one that keeps, you know, um, holding myself back because I don't trust my intuition. Um, I can feel the energies are, are guiding me and in some I doubt and I don't trust that. And I just keep beating myself over it because I keep, you know, asking myself, why do I keep doing that? Or why do I not trust when I know that intuition is stronger than me and I just keep doubting myself and I just don't know what I'm, I, I keep doing wrong. I don't know what, what I'm doing. No. You, 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 you don't require to ask this question. You are not doing anything wrong. You are just being like normal people. That's the only thing you're doing. It's normal. There's nothing wrong with it. Pretty much 90% of the world is thinking the same as you and same. They feel like they want to do something or they feel like they should do something or they feel intuitive towards something and they just doubt themselves. It's normal. This is conditioning. You see, my mind will work the same as yours. 
Meaning, when I feel something, my mind will also doubt. It's normal. It's not a problem. That's what your mind does. Your mind is there to protect you. Ah. But I just do it. See. You see, too many people say, I can't get myself to do it. I know I need to do it, but I can't get myself to do it. Or I keep stopping myself. N not really. It's not a problem, actually. Because if somebody you cared about, their life depended on it right now, you would do it. Yes. So it, it, in every moment, nothing's stopping you. So you say, I feel like this is the right path for me. But there's too many doubts and too many fears. Uh, there's not too many doubts and too many fears. There's just enough doubts and just enough fears that everybody is experiencing at the same time, inclusive of myself. I am experiencing same time. Except I'm feeling the fear and feeling the doubts. And then I in decide, I make a decision. I say, I'm going to follow my intuition anyway. So this is the same thing for you. Whatever you feel, it's just about saying, well, I know that if a gun was pointed to my head, I would be doing it. So I can. It's not that I can't. So it's a choice. So you just make that decision and you just commit. That's all. Do it. I see. Yeah, because that's, that's what happened. In, and like I said, I'm hard on myself. So I'm like, you're not just following. You're not doing it. And then I, I, I know better than this. And then it's just that voice inside <laughs> fighting or I keep, you know, and, and and I don't know, I feel that the that voice, happens. the voice will fight right now. You are giving the voice attention. The voice is the ego mind is wanting to separate from you, the universe, you, the bigger you, the voice will give the negative. You right now are entertaining. Why are you saying this? Why are you thinking this way? Why is there so much doubt and fear? It shouldn't be this way. Please don't be there anymore. I want to follow my intuition. Why are you still there? The more you communicate with it, the stronger it prevails. You're giving it attention. Energy loves attention. What you focus on expands. Right now, you are entertaining it. The only difference, right? I have the same voice. But the only difference is, I'm not entertaining it. It says, hmm, maybe it'll go wrong. Hmm, maybe you won't make it happen. I'm saying, hmm, <laughs> I'm going to do it anyway. You see, that's the only difference. The only difference is whether you are entertaining it or not entertaining it. Currently, you are entertaining it. That's also why you're asking the question. <laughs> is now you, are, now you are bringing 637 people to also entertain your voice. You see? So... So we don't need to entertain it. Mm. Yeah, got it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yes. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Namo Himalaya. Namo Himalaya. We have a uh, mirror. Himalaya. Namo Himalaya. Uh, Master, um, actually, I had this uh, complete left side issue due to childhood um, harassment. So uh, completely all my left side would pain, but my head would be better. So it was there all the time. And uh, last year, 2020, when I learned energy healing from you, I did that. And it really worked. Like everything went, including my black, sorry, back pain. I fell down the stairs. So I had an issue with my lower spine which was also cured. So I was completely fine. And when I started uh, doing all the practices during 1008, everything started coming back. It's like now I have severe back pain and the same pain that I used to have during that time. So I don't know what to do. It's really giving me a hard time. So I'm also not able to do like yoga as usual, like before it's so painful. What should I do, Master? Okay, you're saying it's just your left side? Yes. It's just your left side? Yes. And then the lower back, it's fine. The lower back? The lower back is because of injury 
because of too much pushing or it just naturally came? I had that injury, like the whole thing happened because of uh, injuries and a lot of hitting and stuff like that. So it was there. And then I healed it on 2020 while you thought as the energy healing and everything was fine. And as soon as we started doing the 1008 practices, it's like everything came back. It was like starting from slow, slow, and it became too um, strong and it's like it's hurting. I'm not okay. able to do other practices in yoga too. Okay. If you ask uh, Angela to book in a one-to-one, -one, I'll do a healing session for you. Thank you so much, Master. Namo Himalaya. Namo Himalaya. We have uh, Oli. Namo Himalaya, Master. Namo Himalaya. I to you for the first time. It's a pleasure. It's an honor for me. So my question is, um, I um, did the Manifest Miracles for the second time, the last time, and mm -hmm. I follow all the instructions. I did my plan and everything, as we said, for, uh, for us the first day. Um, then the third day, we talk about the surrendering and uh, how to let it go and just uh, manifest beyond ourselves and all that beautiful, beautiful stuff. But actually, I'm finding hard to, to find the right balance between having a plan and following the plan at the same time do not have the control over that plan and just let things go you know like if i have a plan and i have a timeline and i said to myself okay i want to manifest that in in, in the next month or wherever and then that's not happen i'm just in a bad vibrational frequency you know so my question is okay. just how can we find a balance between having goals, having uh, a plan, but at the same time, just do not have the control over things and just surrender. The, the, there's no balance to achieve because the two separate things. Okay. Having a goal is one thing, not attached to the outcome is a complete separate thing. They're two things. So, I don't think many people here have the trouble of having a goal. So we don't really need to talk about that because uh, there's no compromise there. We should all have a goal. That's okay. We have a relationship goal. We have a career goal. We have so many goals. That's okay. So I'll give you an example. So I had a goal or, or we had a goal here so that when we um, launch Women Unite project, that uh, the token will be three ETH. Okay. Um, the outcome was 0 0.15 ETH. Uh, it's not even mildly close to the goal. So what was my response to it? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's funny. That was my response. Like, like where, where's the attachment? I, 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 I don't, I think I don't know why you're attached. Let's say, for example, mm, when I was, when I was, 23, I had a goal because I, 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 at that time, I had met a group of people that were really, really rich, had a lot of money. So I had a goal that I want to also buy a supercar and also I want to become a millionaire. So I need to become a millionaire. So I was manifesting to become a millionaire. I worked all year. I worked, I worked my life away and I wasn't a millionaire. I came across something, some story about Bruce Lee doing this manifestation. 
that he wrote a check for himself for one million dollars, and one year later he got one million dollars. So when I was twenty-three, I wrote that check, and I put the date on for one year later. One year later, I sit looking at my bank account, and inside my bank account was less than a hundred thousand. So what? Another year passed by, two years now. I'm already one year late on my manifestation. I'm twenty, twenty-four, twenty-five. I'm looking at that bank account, and still under a hundred k. What do I do? Where's the attachment? What's what's the attachment for? You see, then what happens is, I don't think about it anymore. It's almost like, it's almost like, it's almost like I gave up trying to be a millionaire. And then five months later, I was twenty-five. I closed a fifteen million dollar deal in the steel business. Fifteen million dollars. I went from. Having under hundred k in my bank account to having fifteen million dollars in my bank account. We've had this before. We will take a phone. We'll message somebody we really want a response from. We will check it. We will check it. We'll check it. We'll check it. We'll check it. Why they're not replying? Why they're not replying? Why they're not replying? We'll put the phone down. And we'll do something else. We gave up. When we come back, just to find that we get the message. That's how law of attraction works. You see, just like before, what Carol was asking also, and just like many people who are asking the questions inside the chat, you guys are asking the questions almost like you have a choice. What I'm saying is, some of you will ask questions and say, "Master, I can't get myself motivated." Wait there a second. Are you motivated now? Okay, tell me. What do I need to do? I'll do it now. So, what you said before doesn't count. Actually, you just made that up. I don't even know why you said it. You can. You can find motivation. You can find motivation now, right? Master, I know I need to go to the gym every day, but I can't get myself. Can you go now? Yep, I'll go now. So you know you can. The capacity is there. <clears throat> Master, I can't manifest what I want because I keep fearing and doubting. Wait there a second. So you know, fearing and doubting is stopping your manifestation. So why are you fearing and doubting? Yeah, but it's it, the fear and doubt is stopping me. Is it? Is it really? Yes, it is. Okay. So are you feeling the fear now? About the manifestation? Yes, I am. So it's stopping you from taking action. Yes, it is. Will you take action now? Yep, I will. I'll take action. Oh, so the, oh, so now you feel the fear and you're going to do the action anyway. Yes. Okay. Well, why don't you think like that every day? Just do the action, even though you feel the fear. Now comes the question of, Master, I'm keep attaching myself to the outcome, and how do I detach from the outcome when I have a goal? Uh, I say, when you are attached to the outcome, the outcome will not happen. Period. Like it's not a choice. Everybody's asking the question. Like there's a choice. Hey, you know, I'm just attached to it. What shall I do? No, 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 no. It's saying you're attached to it. No manifestation will come. So what are you going to choose? Your choice will be. Then I must choose to detach from it. So now your question is, but how do I detach from it? How do I detach、uh, from it? Okay, don't think about it. But how do I not think about it? Think about something else. You cannot try to not think about the thing that you're thinking about. We gave this example in manifesting miracles. I said you cannot try to not think about the purple elephant. 
Right now, you're thinking about the purple elephant. You say, don't think about the purple elephant. Don't think about the purple elephant. The only thing in everybody's minds right now is purple elephant. You cannot try. How can I, how can I try to not think about the attachment that I have towards my manifestation? You'll be thinking about it all day long. How do you stop thinking about the purple elephant? You start thinking about what? You start thinking about ocean. You start thinking about other things. You think about other things. When you focus, you practice focusing on other things, then you no longer, you no, no longer think about it. Also, everything you move into, you have an attitude of gratitude. That way is easy for you to detach from outcome. You see, oh, I wanted to be a millionaire by today. It didn't happen. What are you grateful for? I'm grateful that I have clothing. I'm grateful that I have a house. I'm grateful that I have food. I'm grateful that I at least have $10 in my bank account. Some people don't even have $10. That's worth celebrating gratitude. And if I focus on that gratitude, the things I'm grateful for, guess what? It naturally detaches from outcome. If I keep thinking, how do I detach from outcome? How do I detach from outcome? How do I stop thinking about purple elephant? How do I stop thinking about purple elephant? It's the same thing. There is no question. There is no choice. The only way is to think about something else and no longer think about the thing you are attached to. That's the only way. Think about something else. Be present in the moment. Enjoy the moments. Yeah. You made me think about the 108 journey. When I did the 108 journey and I was so focused on developing myself and my spirituality and learning everything. So I didn't have enough time to think about my business and how much money are coming in. After the end of the month, I did all the counts and see how money coming in. And I had my record month in the six months. I've never been able to earn that much money. Beautiful. Wonderful. So I want to thank you for that. And I'm really hoping to see you soon in Dubai because I'm here. <laughs> okay. right. so, thank you so much for all of what you're doing for us. Thank you. Namo Himalaya. Namo Himalaya. We will be hosting a, a event here in Dubai uh, in, a, uh, in one month time. It will be for over a thousand people. Um, it will be quite a big event. So we will let everybody know when that happens. So anybody who wants to come, uh, whether you are here already or whether you will fly in, then we will let everybody know soon. So very exciting times we have ahead of us and also it's uh, I hope everybody heard what that share was just now when focused on the spiritual the 108 journey then straight after received the record month you see physical and metaphysical when you work on the spiritual the physical is a representation it just comes naturally without thinking when I first came back from the Himalayas with my training from Grandmaster, imagine I've always been the workaholic. When I knew that I needed to take 30 days without my phone or social media or any communication with my team or any companies or anything to do with work, the thought of that, for any of you who are go-getters, entrepreneurs, right? The thought of that kind of frustrates you a little bit because stresses you out a little bit because you're going to think the whole thing's going to collapse if I'm not there. You see, I was fully focused in meditation for one full month. While I was there, my YouTube channel was trending like never before. And a lot of the internet marketing things that our team was doing was going through the roof. We've never had those type of results before in exactly the same way. My focus was only the spiritual journey. If you find good balance between setting your intentions, setting out the plan, executing the plan, then moving into spiritual practices only, while you are doing your spiritual practices, what are you doing? You're preparing the vessel for receiving. The plan has been executed. The intention has been set. The spiritual journey will allow you to relax your energies and just focus on you and your vibrational frequencies, which is the key to receiving the manifestation.
So it's very powerful, the combination of the physical and the metaphysical. We'll take a couple more questions for today. We have uh, Priti. <clears throat> Namo Himalaya, Master. Thank you so Namo much. Namo Himalaya. <clears throat> you kind of answered one of my questions, which is the balance, because uh, I am struggling a little bit in terms of doing the spiritual practices, because I'm literally getting up, work, sleep, work. And I've noticed in the last three days that my energy has shifted because I haven't been able to do that. So that helps because that's a good reminder. And, 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 and don't worry about, and this is for everyone, don't worry about trying to create a daily uh, balanced life. Too many people are trying to create daily balanced life. What is daily balanced life? I wake up every morning at 5 a.m. to do my morning practices. Then I go to work at 9 a.m. Then I finish my work and I have family time. And everybody is trying to get daily balance. You see, for high achievers, because I know Pretty is high achiever. For high achievers, you will not get daily balance. Why? Because when intuition comes, energy flows, the ideas are there, you want to execute and you don't want to do anything else in that moment. The moment you wake up, you want to execute. The moment before you sleep, you're still executing. You see? So it's okay. That's not a problem. So it doesn't have to be a daily balance. It can be like right now, we're having this conversation after two weeks of hustle. Now you ask this question is when you're recognizing, hmm, my energies may be a little bit out of balance. And if it is, then it's saying, okay, for the next few days, we're going to do some practice, meditation practice, yoga practice, whatever practice, and then I'll balance it out. Once it balances out, because a go-getter, an achiever will also not be able to just practice yoga every single day for the rest of their life. So that will come to conclusion when you feel, I feel recharged. Then what do you do? Go back into the playing field, go into the hustle and grind. It doesn't need to be daily balance. You are conscious enough to recognize now it's slightly out of balance. Okay, cool. The next few days, how do we readjust? And then once we readjust, how do we get back on it? But sometimes, but sometimes, because the energies are in flow and it's moving vigorously like that, that feeling of out of balance is also okay. What I'm saying is, I know I'm out of balance. I know maybe I should be practicing this, but when this is too fast, you don't really have the choice. You have to be indulged in this because right now you're riding the momentum. You see? So it's not a problem. Acknowledge that I'm going to get to that. I know I'm going to get to that, but right now I'm in the midst of it. It's creating loads. It's creating uh, the results. So I need to see this result through. That's fine complete that part it will everything will always come to where the energy will start dying down slightly it will always as much as this is another thing about attachment as well we will have good runs in business in career we'll have a good run right but we know there is no business that has just been good run all the way through the whole business uh, life it's never going to be the case right and this is for everybody who's probably got into any of our projects as well to understand those of you who got in and oh wow $62 now made $26,000 wow another $62 made another $26,000 wow made 50k in two weeks right that's a good run do not at any point expect that this good run is forever that is an expectation that is an outcome but in that good run we have to be doing everything to try and get the most out of that run. So when we're trying to get the most out of a run, there is no stopping actually. We feel out of balance, but there's no stopping. Once that run, you will see when it starts slowing down a little bit. When it starts slowing down a little bit, there's so many things that are involved, earth energies, universe energies. When it's slowing down a little bit, take that time to do the practices that you needed to do to balance out. And when that intuition comes again, and there's another go, you will start going again. This is the sequence of events that will happen in life, you see. So it's the same thing when you observe, even from our side, it's the same thing. When we launched, 
that was the last three months. I seen everybody's face every single day. Uh, then you see energy is settling slightly. So I say, no, no, no needed, not needed today, not needed for the next week. It's okay. Not, not required. I, I'm not, I don't feel that energy like that now. Now it's time to settle a little bit. While we have relaxed, see what's happened in the projects. We've relaxed for only one week or two weeks. Every project prices up, right? This is what I'm saying. You set the intention, you do the action, you run for as long as the energy is running for when the energy feels like it's a little bit tired. Now rest, do your practices, find your balance back and just witness. And when you feel it again, we will run again. You see, so it's like that. Thank you, Master. That really explains a lot because I've been for the last couple of days really <laughs> feeling like actually um, not very good because it's like, oh, I know I've got to do this. And the thing is, it's not like I don't want to do it. I'm so excited at what's going on right now. As you know, it's like I just can't stop. And then I know I feel guilty saying this. The idea of me sitting down and meditating, I'm thinking I can't switch off. That's the problem because I'm so concentrated don't stop. on this. Don't stop. Okay. <laughs> you don't okay. need to stop. Okay. I think that's what it was. I was a bit overwhelmed yesterday thinking about it. And I thought, oh, okay, I really need to stop. It's okay. I appreciate that. I have one a final question, if that's okay. Um, on the last 108 call that I finally did manage to make um, was Grandmaster. He talked about the sit home walk. And he said, do it until the 16th. So that is the one thing I have been able to do. Um, and I've done that throughout. I just wanted to ask, do I still continue doing it or do I now stop? Yeah. Because I you know he come. had said, sorry? Yep, yep. Uh, he said basically on the 16th, he will give more instructions. But I think, I don't know whether it's yourself that's going to give the instruction or him. So I, I'm not clear about that. You can conclude the practice for now. Uh, in the coming week, we will be having a meeting with all 108 and 1008. So. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you, Master. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Namo Himalaya. Thank you. Namo Himalaya. We need to finish for now. Huh? We still have a next uh, engagement. If everybody sit up nice and straight, we're going to conclude with a beautiful meditation to protect our energies. Sit up nice and straight. Your eyes are closed. Clear the mind. Relax the breath. Take a slow, gentle inhale now. And exhale. And again, slow inhale. Exhale. As you continue to breathe, allow yourself to relax your breath more and more. Follow the breath in, follow the breath out. Focus purely on the sound of the breath. Allow your breathing to slowly come back to your normal breathing and relax your breath some more. Relax your body, releasing any tension or any stress you may be carrying, just 
Shrug your shoulders, lift your shoulders up. Feel the tension, hold the tension there. Shrug your shoulders, lift it up. Hold the tension. And inhale. And exhale, relax the shoulders. Feel the energies move down your spine. Feel the sensations you feel through your head, your body, your shoulders. Relax your breath more and more into this moment. Slowly bring your attention towards your third eye. And at your third eye, I'd like you to visualize the moon. Visualize the moon. See the moon there as it is. No extra thinking or thought is required. Just visualize the moon as it is. However it looks, just allow it to be there as it is. I'd like you to continue to visualize and see the moon. Keep visualizing the moon as it is. While you're visualizing the moon, I'd like you to take your left palm, place it over your heart, and your right palm, place it over your left. Breathe into the heart, open up the heart chakra. Slowly exhale. Feel that cool, gentle breeze move into the heart. And continue to visualize the moon. I'd like you now, while you're connecting with the moon, you're visualizing the moon, your palms are towards your heart, you feel this pressure, this sensation in the heart. While you breathe, this is your connection to the moon energies, it's powerful, it's strong. I'd like you to, as you continue to breathe, allow this moonlight to become brighter and brighter, just breathe. Every time you exhale and you release any unwanted energies, visualize the light towards third eye to become brighter and brighter. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Every time you exhale, allow this light to naturally become brighter and brighter. Every time you inhale, every time you exhale, allow yourself to be releasing any unwanted energies, any stuck feelings, any negative energies, any stress, any weight you're carrying, release it out through the breath. I'd like you to place your full attention towards your third eye, towards the moon. Allow it to become brighter and brighter. I'd like you to bring your palms together, hold prayer at heart. Send all the love, your joy, your gratitude to moon energies. Send your gratitude. Feel the gratitude, the joy, the love for moon energies. And as you're connecting with love and positivity, as you're connecting with the moon energies, just witness, observe how it's becoming brighter and brighter towards the third eye. It's glowing, it's powerful. And as you're witnessing it, 
glowing, becoming more and more powerful. Also acknowledge the sensation you're feeling towards your heart. It's a powerful sensation. I'd like you to take a slow inhale, breathe in. And a gentle exhale. And just take a few moments to set some intentions. What intentions would you like to set for the universe? Sending out love to those who need it. Sending out strength and courage and power to those who need it. Sending positivity. Sending light. Sending healing. Breathe, take an inhale. And a gentle exhale. Slowly, bringing your attention back here now, feeling a lot lighter and recharged, ready for a powerful day ahead. Just relax your neck, drop your head down. Feel relaxed. Inhale, exhale. Bringing your attention back here now, in this very moment. And when you're ready, come back to this physical dimension by gently opening your eyes and come back here now. Thank you all for another wonderful session. Thank you for all the love, all the smiles, all the joy. Thank you for all the beautiful comments. Thank you for being here. We finished there for today. Namo Himalaya. <laughs>